why this is being done now. It makes no sense. But is that the only reason people are unnerved right now? Certainly not. There are other reasons. And one of them, I think, I, I try to avoid it, but is Barack, Ob Barack Obama. Barack Obama is such a devious man and so evil at his core that even liberals who voted for him know that he's done damage to the country and they're uneasy as a result. He's not a liberal. He is a Machiavellian power player who has sucked all the power to himself and rewarded all of his cronies to the de detriment of the United States of America. Even true liberals know that, whether it be spying. And I don't have to go through the litany of things that this administration has done and is doing and wants to do. Even pure liberals understand that this man is part of this force of joylessness. Let's put it to you that way. And then the excesses of he and his wife, the Marie Antoinette of American politics. 75 personal assistants and the media doesn't talk about it. One trip after another, $80 million in personal expenses on trips since they became the first family and we're supposed to sit and, and get down on our hands and knees and bow down to them when they're abusing us with their excesses and their abuse of power? Don't you think these things have an effect upon people who are working every day and paying high taxes? The attack and war on police conducted by that street vermin, Al Sharpton. Can you imagine that you would live in a time that a man as low as that, a rabble from the gutter, would be given a television show and then invited into the White House 35 times, 40 times that we know of, and handpick a, an attorney general? You're telling me this doesn't turn people's stomachs to think that the lowest of society has been raised to the highest positions of power and they're ruining everything they touch? A war on police at a time like this? It goes on and on. I don't have to read every you know, chapter and verse of what's wrong and why the world is darker, but what is happening is the question. And is it tied into my question of addiction? I don't know. Are the young people feeling the darkness, that there's no future? Is that part of the reason for the heroin addiction, that they feel hopeless? Not about jobs, but about the future at all? Maybe you could argue, if you want to turn it into something else, that some heroin addicts, the young ones, are some of our more sensitive kids, that they're not all... You know, the bad ones, yeah, you want to glorify, put it into that sense, and maybe they see things or sense things about the future that the other kids don't feel. I mean, I don't want to turn it into that, but think about it. Maybe they feel a darkness is inevitable in our society because of how bad everything has gotten. Maybe that's the problem. I don't really have the answer for you, but I really started this because I saw the show last night on heroin addiction in Cape Cod, and I saw these, it was all white kids. Not inner city kids. They all came from middle class homes. And the part that bothered me the most about the addicts was not the whiny brats who were addicts. They didn't, I couldn't stand listening to them. I wanted to smack them in the face and take the needle away and make them go to a work camp instead of a, ni a nice cushy little a treatment facility where they can sit and hold each other's hand and play, do yoga. You know, who's paying for that? Put them in a work camp maybe. Maybe they'll stop whining about life so much. Send them out west to work on a hay farm. You know, I, I, these are thoughts I have because I'm more from the other world than you are. I come from a different generation. I'm an immigrant son. I was raised the hard way. My father didn't let me whine. He would, he would basically ridicule it out of me. He didn't let me complain. He didn't let me lie. He would hold me. You know, kids tend to want to weasel their way out of things. Let me be very clear. Michael, did you do your homework? Yeah. Did you do it or didn't you do it? Show it to me. Well, this, don't give me a well this and a well that. Show it to me. Why did you get a C? Why did you get a B minus? That's how I was raised. He didn't tell me I was good because I fumbled a football. In fact, he didn't even come to the game. He was too busy working seven days a week to make a living for the family. So I was raised the hard way. I was raised the old way. I am an immigrant son. As a result, perhaps my worldview does not match your worldview. And on that note, I'll take a quick break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-26. There's no greater addiction than a kind of political addiction, and one of the most powerful political addictions is liberalism. It's as addictive as heroin. And it blinds you to any other viewpoint. Let me give you an example. In an age when too many Muslims have been connected to terror, in an age where even liberal France 
after that slaughter in France, went into mosques, deported Muslims. Guess what just happened in New York? Headline, New York Times. Suit over spying on Muslims. New York police get oversight. The agreement to appoint a civilian monitor for police surveillance would restore some of the outside oversight that was eliminated after the 9-11 attacks. So they're going in the exact opposite direction of reality because they have a mentally deranged, or shall I say a mentally disordered, mayor named de Blasio. The man is mentally disordered. All of his opinions are disordered. All of his politics are disordered. And all of his decisions are disordered. So now the New York Police Department is sued by the ACLU, represented Muslims. In my opinion, if I were president, the first thing I would do is conduct a congressional hearing on the ACLU. Who conducted the lawsuit? Hina Shamshi, director of the ACLU National Security Project. So they took a Muslim fanatic, brought her into the ACLU. She sued the NYPD, and now the NYPD has to answer to a civilian lawyer appointed by the mentally disordered mayor of New York to review intelligence files and report potential wrongdoing to the police commissioner, to the mayor or a federal, a federal judge. What this means is they will not stop a terrorist attack in the near future. This will be another Southern California mass shooting. This will be another Paris attack, as sure as I'm sitting here. This was a class action lawsuit again brought by the most dangerous group of lawyers the United States has ever seen. One of the first acts that Donald Trump has to engage in is an immediate congressional hearing looking into the ACLU and its possible ties to foreign influence, foreign cash. If they can find, find that any of the money going to the ACLU is coming from terrorist-related national organizations or international front groups, they can take down the ACLU under RICO statutes. I'd be only too glad to contribute to that discussion. And believe me, there are many lawyers in this country, decent lawyers, good lawyers, who would be willing to take the ACLU down joint by joint, seize their assets, and find out just exactly who is running the show at the ACLU. Any idea why people are sad in the country? Look no further than this decision. Michael Savage, good night.